Yeah, it's not just Dr. Hauser. There's lots of scientists, if you look at it, uh, that are concerned of everybody's brain health. And this is just, again, some article where they talked about the scientists were just saying like, you know, is there a correlation between COVID-19 and the risk of getting dementia? So some of the summaries of this article were that they weren't sure, you know, post-COVID was the long haul symptoms due to some kind of direct invasion of the COVID virus into the brain, or is it some kind of systemic effect, like the body's getting too much inflammation, which of course I told you can occur if somebody has vagus nerve degeneration that can cause systemic inflammation. And then they said, well, where the spike protein attaches, they found that there's receptors for it attaches the ACE2 receptor is in the small blood vessels in the brain. So is there in the brain's uh, some coagulopathy or microclots that's causing the problem? The study suggests that the best way to avoid, you know, basically long haul neurologic effects of COVID-19 is to optimize brain and body health in these ways, right? So Dr. Hauser's all in in this recommendation, and, he, and, and I'm just somebody who does that, so being physically active. So normally on Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays, I meet uh, Dr. Stevens, my friend Linda Stevens, who I've been running with for years. Then on Thursdays, I meet the buds. We run on the beach here, uh, great guys. Uh, then on Tuesdays, often, you know, I'll, I'll probably come into the office early, you know, or uh, do my Bible reading or something on uh, Tuesday morning. Our Saturdays, normally, I would ride my bike with Marion, so that's kind of like how we start the weekend, which, of course, is a great way to start the weekend. And then um, we recently, our pastor, <laughs> did a sermon, a whole sermon on keep the Sabbath holy. So I'll be honest with you. We don't, we would, beside going to church, we wouldn't do anything different on Sunday. But it's interesting, isn't it? In the Bible, it says God worked for seven days and God rested on the seventh day. So, in other words, God rested on the seventh day. Then Jesus apparently kept the Sabbath holy. So, let's be honest if we as human beings set aside one day where we're going to have spirit we're going to have spiritual food spiritual restoration emotional restoration physical restoration we're going to rest we're going to restore we're going to imagine Marion and I if we spent like one full day where we're connecting and I'm listening more and you know spending more time with her and vice versa and we do something amazing together and we pray together and it's not a rush day and we we knew every week that for 24 hours we're going to keep the sabbath holy and just have an amazing day together the other six days would we probably be more loving more kind more caring you know the answer of course is yes so i guess i'm just saying the housers haven't kept the sabbath holy but we're going to try, we're, and we are, we are going to try. So we're, we're, we're figuring out what does that mean. I know for me, it's going to mean that for 24 hours, I'm not going to do electronics. Like I'm not going to be on the internet. So that's what I need to do. That doesn't mean that Marion needs to do that. But I just think all of us should figure out what is really helping us be who we want to be. And, I, and I, I would just make the suggestion, the main thing is we got to be extremely loving and understanding and kind. So is, if watching the news doesn't help that, nix it. If a TV show doesn't help you, nix it. If this video doesn't do it, nix me. You know what I mean? Like, or if this is, if be, subscribing to the YouTube channel of Caring Medical is helping you be more healthy, so you can be more kind, caring, and loving than all in, you know, watch all the videos. But if it's another stressor for you, then nix it. You know, like we all, we all, we all need to do that. And we all need to be doing cognitively stimulating activities. So 
and that mostly means reading, not watching, right? Because watching is visual and it's very, it, it, 80% of the stimulus in the brain is visual. But what we need to be developing is our cognitive ability, which is problem solving, which more has to do with reading, like reading books, like reading books, researching, reading, thinking, not just watching something and being passive for our entertainment. There's a place for that. But just if you want your brain to be better, you have to use your brain. It's like any other tissue in the body. If you don't use your brain and passively watching television shows that are entertaining, it's not helping your brain. It's not helping your brain unless like you're laughing and it's non-stressful and it's joyful. Right? It doesn't mean that you don't watch Law and Order, but I'm not going to watch Law and Order. I got like the ER here in my office. I got people who can't breathe, they can't talk, their stomachs aren't working. Like when I get off, I need like laughter, I need comedy, I need uh, sports. Like I'll watch sporting events that have been inspirational to me, like Sydney McLaughlin when she broke the world record, then she won the Olympic gold medal, and she's trying to be a loving, caring, kind person like so I'll watch her videos I'm a fan of Lauren Daigle the musician so I you know watch her videos like that's what helps me like it makes me be a more kind caring loving person by watching those type of videos uh, I love Rich Mullins he's like my favorite artist from a long time ago so some of his songs are some of my favorite songs step by step there is a, such a thing as glory like very, very uplifting songs. So there's certain songs that minister to me in a very deep level. So those are some of the things that I'll do. Sleeping seven to eight hours every night, I definitely do this. Marion's really good at it too. So we're almost all the time, even on weekends, like nine o'clock, you know, we're out. So we don't stay up very much, even on a Saturday night. I mean, maybe till 10 o'clock on a Saturday night, but we don't like to. We would just soon be in bed by nine o'clock because they found that you get much better sleep if you do the same routine every day. Same routine every day. Whatever you do normally at 8 o'clock, do that. Go to bed 8, 30, 9 o'clock. And then we get up like 5 o'clock. So we definitely, most of the nights, get this 7 to 8 hours. Uh, if I'm extra tired, I don't do exercise in the morning and I'll sleep in. Then I might get 9 hours. Having a balanced diet with all the essential vitamins and minerals. Uh, my wife, or you know, she's the one in charge of the food just because she's a gourmet cook. So I'm fortunate. I have a gourmet cook in the office. So I'm a gourmet washer disher, you know, if there is such a thing. So I, I'm the dishwasher. But yeah, so we eat healthy, we eat a lot of organic, having regular social interactions. So everybody needs a tribe. So you have to have. Uh, people around you, whether it's your mom, dad, friends, like we have to have people around us that inspire us to be all that we want to be. You are going to become who you're, who you're around. So if you have somebody who's a negative nilly, a sister, a brother, a parent, that every time you talk to them, it brings you down. My encouragement is that you pray diligently for them. You keep praying for them and then you have an honest discussion with them. So I'll tell you recently, and I can share this because I know my dad wouldn't be mad at it. Uh, so we're, we have a certain area that we sit in. It's right by the kitchen. It's two chairs, very comfortable chairs. And then he was being really, really negative. And I said, Dad, look around you. You're retired. You can do anything you want all day. You're in Sanibel Island. You're at your son and daughter's house. Look outside, because you can see the outside from our living room. I said, look outside. Everything you see is beautiful. Look inside. Everything's beautiful. Like Mary and I made this property to be restorative, to be regenerative. So we consciously make an effort in this household to be positive to be encouraging. So I said, you're choosing, you are choosing to be negative. You are choosing to be negative. And then it, it struck a chord with him. So, uh, cause 
if somebody watches the news, by definition, the news is going to make you the emotions of whatever the news is. So if there is an inspirational story, of course, you're going to be inspired. But if it's like this thing is getting bombed, that thing is getting bombed, the economy is doing this, gas prices are doing that. In other words, it's kind of complaining. It's, it's negative. It's going to make you complaining and negative. So that's ha what's happening to my dad. So there's a couple of times over the season, because they, they live with us for three or four months during season, which is like January through April down in Florida, because the it gets cold up north, so people come here. So he got negative, and I'll look at him. He's like, nope, I'm going to choose to be positive. And if he keeps doing that, my father, who's like 82, he has a much greater chance to make it to 90 than if he doesn't. Because every time you laugh, every time you're positive, you're strengthening your vagus nerve. And every time you choose to be negative, you choose to hear negative, you choose to be under stress when you don't need to be under stress, then you're injuring your body or you're injuring the vagus nerve. So Marion and I, when we find ourselves going there, we make a decision, it's our problem or it's not our problem. I'll give you an example. So say one of our friends is doing something that we don't think is beneficial for them. We make a decision, we need to talk about it to help them. Like in other words, we're gonna do something about it, we're gonna talk it to them. But if it's like, if we've already talked to them and they're still gonna do something that we know is gonna be damaging to them, there's nothing else we can do except pray for them. So what we do is we turn a negative in a negative discussion about something bad they're doing and we pray for them. And then guess what? Then if it comes up again, we'll pray for them again. And then normally what happens is either the thing gets resolved or God gives us an opportunity on a bike ride or uh, when we're with them, then they bring it up. They, they bring it up asking for our help. So again, that would have been an answer pr to prayer. So that's what we all should do with the stressors in our life. Try to make it where we're doing something positive about it, doing something positive about it. So yeah, and the last statement here is just that with long haul COVID, there's a lot of cognitive thing and some people are worried, concerned that it might lead to uh, more cases of dementia. But I would just say dementia is on the rise. So I believe that it's because the neck curve has changed, the pressures in the brain are going up, and we know that high blood pressure leads to a heart disease, and I believe that high brain pressure is gonna to lead to brain disease. And the way to resolve it, just like high blood pressure, you should do what? Lose weight, make sure your blood is thin, drink more water, be positive, get rid of anger, if somebody has high brain pressure, it'd kind of be the same, like do lifestyle things that are very healthy. Make sure your workstation, if you work on the computer, is pro neck health, pro brain health. And then uh, try to have be in a mood that is peaceful, calming, joyous. And if you do that, your nervous system is just going to be awesome, which can be documented by heart rate variability. I really hope that uh, this video is helpful for you if you are somebody who is a or you have a loved one who has long haul COVID. I really hope that uh, by improving your neck structure, the symptoms go down. And if you take to heart what I've said here and it's helpful to you or people that you know, I'd really love hearing from you. So love to see posts of like, hey doc, did this or that, what you recommended, I'm just feeling so much better because we need to get this kind of information out to everybody. And if we do that, the world's going to become a more loving, caring, kind place. Thank you. Have a great day and thank you for watching.